Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to take you through an onboarding tutorial where you can set up a multi-step guide to show your users how to interact with your app um, and have them only interact with the onboarding guide itself and not the rest of the app um, until you are ready. So when I click finish here, now I can start interacting here. So this is going to be using a coaching bubble template. And it's pretty easy to get something like this set up. Obviously, if you have more steps going on in your application, then it'll take a little bit more time, but definitely worth uh, taking the time to do this because your users will really appreciate the, the hints upon sign up. So let's take a look. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is create a group that covers the entire page. The reason we're doing this is because when the user is going through the onboarding steps, we do not want them to interact with any other elements on the page. So by having a group on top of everything, it will um, prevent them from clicking anything underneath it. So all of our onboarding steps are actually gonna be inside of this group. Uh, I'm gonna label this group, group onboard. All right, and then I'm gonna set the transparency to zero so they don't actually know they're working within a group. Um, and then inside of this group, we're gonna add our uh, different steps for the onboarding process. So I'm gonna add another group here in the upper left because I'm gonna to wanna to point out this little toggle switch. That's gonna be my step one for onboarding here. Uh, so I'll label the group step one. Okay, and let's see, I'm gonna have a little icon with an arrow pointing up, and then I'll have some instruction text. So click here to toggle between night and day modes. All right, and then I'm gonna add a button to allow the user to move on to the next step. So this will just say next, and we'll color it green like that. All right, so this is gonna be step one. Now I'm just gonna copy this group and paste it and we're gonna have step two on the other side here because there's a little drop down menu that lets the user open up an activity feed. So I just wanna point that out to them as well. So I'm just gonna switch the places of these, of the uh, text and, and arrow. Okay, and this is gonna say, click here to open the activity feed. And we'll remember to label this group step two we've already got our next button. Now I'm gonna copy this again, and we're gonna come down to the bottom to point out the create button. And just for this demo, this is gonna be our last step in the onboarding. So this will say click here to create a new event. Okay, and I'm just gonna switch my arrow to a down, down arrow. There we go. And then this button, instead of saying next, since this is our last step, this button will say finish. Okay, so we have our three steps there, um, each in their own group, and they're all within the outer group on board, um, which again is letting the user, it's preventing the user from clicking anything behind it, so they have to go through these. So now we need to set up the conditions to show the group and to walk through the steps one at a time. First thing we need to do is create a field under the user type. So I'm gonna create a field called onboard on. And the value is gonna be yes, no, and I'm gonna set the default for this field to be yes to true, so that any time a new user signs up, this field will automatically be set to yes, because I want everyone to go through this at least once. So now that I have this field in place, I can add a visibility condition to group onboard, which is our big group here. So I'm gonna add a condition when the current user's onboard on is yes, then this group will be visible. Okay, and by default, it's not going to be visible. So I need to make sure to uncheck this. Okay, so there, everything went away. It showed up here in my hidden elements. So if I toggle that back on to just see it, um, now we can see that this is something that will only be visible under this condition when that yes, no field is set to yes. Okay, so that's the first part. Now we need to be able to dynamically move between these three groups because we only want to see one of these at a time. So what we're going to do is create a custom state on um, group on board. So I'm gonna click on the inspector icon right here. And I'm on, again, I'm on group on board and I'll add a new custom state. This state, I'll call it step. And the value will be a number. Okay, so when the user logs in or signs up, we're gonna set the custom state to number one because that's where we want them to start. So I'm gonna go over to my workflows for the login sign up. 
and I have one sequence of actions for both logging in, sign, logging in and signing up. So I'm just going to add on one more action because I this is fine to be applied to both scenarios. Is to set the state of group on board, and we're going to set step to one. That way, anytime a user logs in or signs up, this will automatically start at one, and our first group step one will become visible. And the only way we can make that happen is by setting visibility conditions to all of our steps as well, just like we did with group on board. So for group step one, when on board, group on board step is one, then this will be visible. And I'll copy this and paste it to the other groups as well. This one will only be visible when the step is two. And then obviously step three, oops, I didn't relabel this. Here we go, is step three, then it will be visible. And by default, we need to remember to turn these off. So by default, they are not visible. They'll have their turn. They will only become visible when that custom state is a specific value. So that's why upon sign up or login, uh, we'll set the state to one so that we can start out with this one already visible here. Now to change the state value to move through each group here, we're going to create actions off of these next buttons. So when next is clicked, and I'll uh, add this to my onboarding folder here. When next is clicked, we're going to set that state group on boards step to value two because we're already on step one, so we want to move to two, and I'm going to relabel this to This is uh, next step one's next button, and then this is going to be step two's next button. Okay. So when we click on that button, we move on to step two. Now I will copy this event and paste it, and then we're going to change this to the other next button here. So when this next button is clicked, we want to move to step three. All right, and then we'll want to change the state again for when we click the finish button. So this is, uh, let me turn this on here, this button here to close out the, the onboarding flow. So when finish is clicked, what I'm actually going to do is clear the state so that it doesn't have a value. And I'm going to update the current user's onboard on field. So onboard on will now equal no. So they've actually finished the onboarding process by setting this back to no. We are no longer meeting the visibility condition for group onboard, so it'll disappear and they can interact with the rest of the page. Now this is something where you can definitely set up some kind of a preference area for your users so that they can turn this back on, so that they can go back through the onboarding sequence again if they want to. All right, so I'm going to sign up a new user, test user two. I think I've done this a few times. Agree and sign up. So again, by clicking this, that onboard on field will automatically be set to yes for me. Okay, so my, that's an alert message that I have showing up there. So now you can see that this is showing, which also tells me that the big onboard group is visible. Um, well, it's not technically visible because it's mostly transparent, but it's um, it's here on the page. So if I go to click anywhere, I can't actually interact with anything. So um, you can also make it so that this group has a little bit of color to it so that the user is more aware that they're interacting with something that is you know, taking them through a specific path and they don't get confused when they kind of click somewhere else on their own. So click here to toggle between night and day modes. OK, great. So I'll click next. Now I'm on step two, click here to open the activity feed, next. And finally, click here to create a new event, finish, and my yes, no field should have been set back to no, so now I can actually click on things and interact with the app. And that's it. If you have any questions about how to get this working in your app, please reach out. Also, this is a coaching bubble template. If you're interested in picking it up, I have the link below to get it. And I'll also be keeping this onboarding process inside the template as well. Thanks for watching.